Hi guys, I'm Anita and I'm back with another video. Today I wanted to share with you my reading plans for this next coming week. I decided, considering I haven't uploaded anything in a week's time and I haven't really filmed anything, I could do an update and talk a little bit about my reading plans for the week as well as what I've been reading over the past week as well. Um, and just letting you know how what's going on. So men I've mentioned before that August is a really really busy uh, work working month for me and it's definitely that. It's it's not as heck the first week, week was intense and you can tell that I think in my vlog um, that I did for the readathon where um, I had a lot of overtime last week I didn't I think 15 minutes something was added to my overtime um, so yeah that was all and um, yeah and today I worked again like an extra 15 minutes but it's not been as as uh, hectic as I feared but I think this week might um, get back to that I also think it's because a lot of the deadlines has been postponed due to the COVID-19 so that means that all of those who have like mid-year taxes and stuff to be registered has been changed just as the previous like quarterly taxes submission was changed to like postponed to like now like in the first of September uh, all of the mid-year ones has been postponed to not being admitted until um, the first of March next year so we have a little quite a lot of extra time to actually get those balances finished and stuff so that definitely make the make my job not as busy but had I had to do that I would have been stressed out right now um, so I'm happy that's not the case this year I can sort of loosely get back to it while I I work quite a lot of things obviously and I have a couple of things that I need to have finished by the first of September like the ones who have quarterly taxes and stuff but I don't have the, as many of them as I do mid mid-year taxes um, and I've come to understand that the Danish taxes works the same way in most countries except the US <laughs> so um, I, I don't think it's going to be easy explaining how the Danish system works <laughs> so that would be too much time anyway uh, otherwise in terms of the COVID-19 things has definitely changed Recently, there's been um, a slight upswing in number of admitted um, positive tests, as I think we've seen in a lot of places. Like a lot of countries have sort of gotten um, started getting a lot of uh, positive tests get again, again. But at least this seems to be more regional, and still we are like testing so many that uh, we are kind of on top of it. And whenever things happen. Um, they do have do things in order to make sure it doesn't go out of take off like it did back in March so I don't think we are nervous about anything closing down again but the things that up until now uh, there's been no um, demand that you use face masks in Denmark because their Danish health authorities have been um, not been convinced that face masks were necessary as long as we kept the distance but so where the things have changed now is that if you are taking public transports where you're not able to be as uh, keep that distance because we have you're seated next to strangers we have started having demands that you use face masks when you go on public transport transport and uh, some places you also have to wear it if you're going to the supermarket to 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 buy uh, stuff and uh, yeah so things are definitely a little bit different and I am considering if I should get a hand of them I don't use the public transportation because I have my own car and I don't and I use that to work and when I have to go anywhere here in the city I take my bicycle my car or my two feet I, I work <laughs> I walk there so um, I don't think it's going to be necessary for me, but if they start putting more uh, requests that you use um, face masks in stores, like convenience stores or something like that, or um, 
grocery stores then I definitely think that I will like to have some in hand um, so I'm ready for that but we'll see how things change over the next week our Prime Minister did say that um, elderly people and people who needed to use public transport like pendlers and stuff had to be able to get the face masks first because it was an obligatory thing for them um, and uh, the good thing about the uprising of the positive test if you if you will is that the majority of those who has been tested positive has been youth or young people in the 20s mostly it seems because they tend to do a lot of partying so it's quite their own fault I think but I hope that they do remember to keep distances to other people and to make sure that like at least they are not in close contact with like the elderly people in the family or something like that but so that is what's been happening here um, the phase four of the reopening has just started anyway and uh, so it wasn't as bad as it seems but um, it means that um, sort of concert venues has started get it, will be able to open soon as well as um, nightclubs with restric restrictions that you for the nightclubs you're not allowed to dance and stuff so so I still think there's a lot of restrictions so it's fine so let's get into the books that I did read last week uh, before this becomes too long of a video that talks about corona anyway um, last week I managed to finish four books and so that's definitely fine and uh, let's get into them the first book that I finished was Peace Talks by Jim Butcher this is book, the most book 16 and the most recent book in the Dresden Files series the Dresden Files series is one of my favorite urban fantasy series I can't talk about the plot of this one without being too spoilery but I definitely enjoyed it I think the fun thing about oh fun I don't know the the thing about uh, Jim Butcher is that we've been waiting a long time for a new release uh, I think um, Last time there was a book released in this series was in 2015, but then he went into some personal um, things that happened in his personal life with his family situation, and uh, that made him not inspired, uninspired, and not able to focus on reading because there was a lot of other things that he had to focus on first, which is fine and fair. But it also means that when he came back to read, he has so many things that he wanted to share with us that he wrote. Uh, so made so <laughs> this book so long that it had to be split into two and I think you can sort of tell there was a bit of a cliffhanger type ending towards the end of the book so um, I'm definitely happy that the next book will come out later in the year um, it took a while before I actually figured out that there was two books coming out by <laughs> Jim Butcher this year or for, for the Dresden Files so I'm really happy about it I did enjoy my time being back with this it's my favorite type of narrator of the audiobook so the audiobook book was great um and i ended up there was a lot of moments in this one that i was really happy with there was a moment that makes me anxious and i'm worried about one of the characters and what's going to happen to them i'm not going to go into anything deeper than that and i'm just going to say that i gave it four and a half stars it's not my favorite but it definitely was a really good read and i hope that the next book will definitely be just as great or if not better then I read Murder, Murder in Chelsea by Victoria Thompson. This is book 15 of the Gaslight Mystery series. And uh, for this one, I also can't say anything about the plot. Usually I will sort of say a little bit about the mystery as well, because the mysteries are usually very different and how they play into the part. But if I do tell you about the mysteries for this one, it will spoil a lot of things that has happened between the last five to six books. I don't remember exactly when this character came into the story, but it follows a mystery surrounding that character and uh, a couple of other things. And this one was so, it's had me so emotionally invested in the story. I was super into it and really enjoyed it and tried guessing along with the mystery. And this is my favorite book in the series. I ended up giving this five out of five stars. I did not expect that, but I am super happy that finally I was able to give this five, a series, um, a book in the series five stars because I have only been giving them four stars more or less, all of them, even though that's not a bad rating, it's just how it's been. But this one definitely 
uh, just opt itself and really did what I wanted it to. So I'm really, really happy with that. Another book that I finished was uh, Smoke Bitten by um, Patricia Briggs. This is book 12. <laughs> this is book 12 of the Mercy Thompson series. Mercy Thompson is my favorite urban fantasy. I think Dresden Files is one of my favorite, but Mercy Thompson is my favorite. And uh, there's a lot of things happening in this one. As, again, it's difficult talking about um, the plot of these books without spoiling too much, but she went, finds out that one per like her neighbor had that had passed Who's not like a significant person in this whole grand world, but She had passed and some there was some mysterious stuff with the, that but it ended up with her being bitten by this rabbit that left a mark and it was like smoke bitten and um, But it couldn't control her like it does with others because she has an ability to sort of reflect magical things, but she was not able to do it completely, so there was some sort of infection with it, I guess. Um, but then things happen and some of the people, one, uh, one of some of Mercy's uh, closer friends is um, also like manipulated or take, their mind is taken over by this rabbit character. And we're trying to figure out who it is and how, what happens and how this all came about. And at the same time, something has put a strain between Mercy and Adam's rela relationship. Um, and you don't really know what it is in the beginning. So I think personally, uh, there was a little too many subplots going on in this one. I usually don't mind um, when there's more than one like main plot going on. But this one just seemed a little bit not as good as previous ones. But on the other hand, it was better than the just the re most recent before this one, uh, which I also had a few issues with, but I still really find this one was great and there were a couple, uh, definitely a lot of great scenes in this one and I'm happy I read it and I'm looking forward to the next one, but I did give this one four and a half stars, not a full five stars. And the last and final thing that I finished last week was Hunted by the Sky by Tanas Bettina. This is a YA fantasy and it follows like two perspectives. We are following the perspective of this woman and she has this mark that makes people fear her and uh, she has lost her mother where the king is the culprit like the reason for that happening and so she's on a sort of revenge trip and she wants to avenge her mother's death and trying to um, find a way into the castle and kill the king on the other hand we are following the perspective of this guy who is able to see so he's a sort of truth seeker he can tend when people are lying and he becomes sort of a spy for the king and has to report back on things that are happening around him and their lives get intermingled into this story um i start i would start by saying that the beginning of this book i was pretty intrigued um, but somewhere along after the first 20% of it or something like that I started losing interest in the story as a whole um, It did have a pretty decent ending, I did enjoy that part So I think I'm on about a three and a half stars overall for this book Because I did really enjoy like the mythology aspect of this one I think it was great seeing some different sort of character types um, in my fantasy than you average white person So I was really happy about that And um, um, I will say that the narrative choice for the male perspective was a bad choice. <laughs> I don't really like how, didn't really like how he was narrating. Maybe that has an effect on my overall enjoyment of this and how much I paid attention to it. Um, because he had a way when he was speaking women voices, it sounded really, really weird, and I really didn't like it. Um, and also like younger. Um, characters voices it sounded a little bit weird and strange and overall i end up giving this a three and a half star as i said which is definitely fine but it just wasn't um as great as i was hoping it to be and now into what my plans are for this next week and this upcoming week in terms of reading plans um let's start out with the books that i have already started and i'm planning on reading over the next week the first one of those is Heartless by Gail Carriger. This is one I read for the Stack in the Series prompt of, of project that I'm doing. 
Um, it's the fourth book in the Parasol Protectorate series, so I only have this one and another book left in the series, which I'm hoping to finish this year for sure. Um, I'm, I don't know how far I got today, but yesterday when I made this list, uh, I was about a third of the way through it. I managed to listen to the first third in on Friday and I think I might have listened to a third again today. I'm not sure. It could have been a little less, but I think I'm about halfway, between halfway to two thirds of the way through the book. So I'm hoping that I can finish it tomorrow. And uh, otherwise I have a couple of audiobooks that I need to, not audiobooks, library books that I need to get to because they have to be handed in over the next week, um, at least one of them has to be physically handed in. The other one is an ebook that is expiring from my overdrive. The first one I have started on, and that is Bjørtel by Sissel Zellermitted. This is a Danish fantasy. It's the first in a series, and I think the subtitle of this book is called Yeah. And they were lured, like lured into things. Uh, so far, what I have come to know is that we are following. We're supposed to be following three perspectives. I've been introduced to two of them and it's set part of it is set in a mountain with elves and i'm not sure if i'm really digging it yet and um, the first 40 pa 45 pages hasn't convinced me but i'm giving it another 50 like so i get to around 100 pages before i make a final decision of it but i do hope that i will enjoy it and a lot of people seem to really love this series so i am going into it with an open mind but i don't think I think maybe it's because the first part of it where that I've read from it's been like majority of it has been from this girl's perspective and so far I'm not convinced that she's a great character <laughs> um, and then we have one other character that we I had like two pages <laughs> from that perspective or something like that which didn't didn't give me anything and then I think we're just about to be introduced to the third character in the next chapter so we'll see how things go um, it says that in the mountain, or mountain, we don't have mountains in Denmark, so let's call it a hill, in the hill, which is um, the world of the elves, there's Askatla who, Askatla, who is fighting for revenge for her stepsister, um, of, who was murdered by her foster brother, <laughs> so it's kind of intense. Um, and in the outside world, in the human world, um, there's an, uh, a guy named Johannes who is um, who gets these mystical dreams um, about a grey-eyed elder woman. Um, and then there's the university student Cyril, uh, who's trying to figure out what's happening to her. Why does he make men crazy, and what happens? with her back. Is she even human? I don't know. Um, so we'll see what happens with this one. Um, so that is one of them. The other one, a library book that I have to read is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I put a hold on this a couple of weeks ago, which is why it's about to expire because I saw that Kayla from Books Lala is having this as her book of the month in the literary dead book club and i wanted to read something by riley sager so i figured i could as well just try and read it this month it's just like it's 400 pages so it's quite a long book so we'll see how things go um, then i have a couple of newer at least 2020 releases um in audio that i'd like to get to because i've decided to try and uh work through my anticipated Danish, no, my anticipated new releases that I have marked, written down in a journal uh, every month and those that I have access to, I could just as well get started on them immediately instead of um, just waiting around to, I don't know, whatever, to finish, to get to them or something like that. So the first one of those is Seven Deadly Shadows by Courtney Alameda, I think. I, I think this might be something like thrillery i'm i haven't i've forgotten a little bit what it's about so i feel a little bit surprised but i think it is a sort of speculative thing so it's under the genres fantasy young adult paranormal urban fantasy mythology young adult fantasy supernatural retellings and japan so lots of different sub genres um so 
I'm looking forward to reading it. I don't exactly remember what it's about. And the other book that I have planned to read is Blood Countess by Lana Popovich. I haven't read anything by Lana Popovich before, but I know she wrote that book with it's like a purple cover with some flowery thing happening on it. Um, but I've forgotten the name of it. Oh, is it, was it flowers? It was definitely purple. And um, yeah, both bo those books are fairly short, so I hope that I can finish them this week. And finally, I have also put myself down to finish, at least start and read the majority of it, uh, Thief of Time by Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett is one of my favorite authors. I have really high hopes for Thief of Time. It's the fifth book in the Death sub-series. And the sub-series has proven to be my favorite of the sub-genre sub-series in the ter Discworld, Ter Precious Discworld. So I'm really looking forward to getting to this. It's on my five-star prediction, so I hope that it lives up to that. I've, had, I've read a couple of books from this list that didn't live up to it completely. They were not bad, but they were not five stars, so I'm hoping this one will do the job. Okay. These are all of the books that I have planned on reading over the next week. Um, in total, this means I'll need to read 1,994 pages, which seems out there. <laughs> it means I would have to read like 285 pages per day. And average audio time per day would be like two and a half hours, and average pages per day would be like 105. So it's not terrible, but I know it's not managed. It's probably not gonna happen. Like last week, my average was 115 pages per day. So we'll see how things goes. I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, reading these books over the next week. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I've been talking about today. What are your plans for the next week? Do you have any exciting books that you want to read? Uh, let me know about that. And uh, yeah, this is all I have for today. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.